Everyone has to do something with their day, their life. I have a logical idea, but I don't know exactly why I chose tennis. It was never forced upon me, nor was I surrounded by it. But for some reason, it became the medium I used to do all of the above. I've never been outstandingly good at it to the point where it's a logical course of action to cultivate a good life. But it's held me captivated for the good part of 20 years. It fast tracks me to exposure of my insecurities, my internal victories, the tent pegs of my identity, and everything in between. All the mud and all the clarity. It's funny, it's just the sport of tennis. I've been inspired by people being authentic and open about their journey in a lot of different walks of life. Seeing someone passionate and proud of what they do is pretty cool. Our life touring the world, playing tennis, is a pretty unique one. It's nomadic, it's adventurous, it's audacious, and it's bloody humbling. To be honest, I didn't choose to play tennis. And no, I don't have psycho parents who force me. Starting at two years old, I think I used to tell myself that I was born to play tennis, or tennis was my destiny. But I think if I'm honest, these are just kinds of spiritual overlays that made me feel more secure. Throughout my teen years, I think I played for what tennis could get me, primarily money and status. The ups and downs of being a tennis player and a human being has made me realise that the only constant in this life is change. So while I know that money and fame will temporarily feel great, I know they aren't going to give me what society made me hope they would. But who am I to say this? I've never won a Grand Slam, so maybe it will. I hope I can test this theory. What I do know is that I've made some of my best lifelong friends who I'll cherish for the rest of my life. A bond which is strengthened through the journey of traveling the world trying to master a made-up game. Another thing I do know is the continued exposure to uncomfortable situations tennis provides, which has in the past made me reject it. Now, it does the opposite. The mental washing machine tennis puts me through has made me very aware of the power of my mind and taught me a lot about myself. So to answer the question of why I play tennis, I play tennis because I love it. It's 7.30 here, it's already boiling hot. Got a day off today. We'll make the most of it starting at the beach, have a little coffee, gym. I will go to gym, not sure if I'll do a gym session, probably just some rehab and some stretching. Don't know if I've got a full session in me, maybe I do. See how, see how well the coffee hits. Tom's getting back from Japan, he's had a nice final, final run to end his, end his year. Contemplating coming back with me after two weeks in Japan, but he, he stuck it out and he got rewarded. What were your thoughts starting the preseason? I was really looking forward to coming home. It was a really, really tough year. A lot of ups and downs, but it's always just, just nice to have that coming home time. Actually having more than one week in the same place as well. Uh, getting to see family and friends, getting home cooked meals, a prolonged period where I can really work on my game, make some big improvements. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about starting early in the day. I much prefer the, uh, the sleep early, wake up early, than the sleep late, wake up late. Maybe a little bit of mischievousness has left me over the years. A bit of age, a bit of wisdom, a few hairs on the chin now, so. Had to meet Dano. He's feeling a little under the weather, unfortunately. Um, but pretty pumped for this uh, this session. First one of the preseason. Let's go. How are you feeling? After that warm up? Not worse. Yeah. What do you guys want to get out of this session? Um, I don't know, it's balls on string, really. And Jocko is working on probably the same thing, but he's working on getting his toes pointing to his target. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, see, I go, I go like way too like, much. This way. Yeah, yeah, me too. I feel like Jocko's yeah, sure. been going more like, especially off something like deep, or like a good um, good return. He's been on serve and kind of sliding yeah, this way. Yeah, I've noticed at the finals, he's just going like... I feel like more in the past, he's more trying to get yeah, this, but yeah. now he's just kind of sitting there and just timing it like that. Like, yeah. It must be hard being Jocko going okay. like, like, how can you even, like thinking of stuff to improve on, yeah. or like, oh no, this one. Yeah. It's so easy to just go, oh, I'm just going to keep doing exactly what I'm doing some of the steps.
efficient. Uh, yeah, tight up my swings and just making sure timing's in one priority. You know when you're sick and sometimes you push through it a bit and it like makes you feel better? Yeah. Sit off, like even if you're going three points on two points. Well my new thing is sitting that forehand grip a little bit more so it comes in my body, I can kind of get it out of here. Seems to be working better, helping me keep my racket in front a little easier. I find it's easier to adjust to my backhand volley. With my left hand rather than be sitting here ready for a backhand and then I get caught in here for the forehand. So. Yeah. Okay, so I'm working, I've learned so much more on how to uh, practice doubles. I'm still probably a rookie, but so much of the you know, improvement lately is on being service partner and helping my server out. So this has just been a big one to get a lot of reps in. With uh, I'm, going, I'm um, as if we're playing a regular setup. I'm service partner. Sammy's the returner. I'm covering my half of the court, which should be anything in the middle here. Occasionally, he's going to try and sneak one up the line. But mix it into this realm anywhere, and then you can go pretty flat. You know, returns generally pretty flat and through, okay? after having a bit of a break from it, but keen to get better. Tennis session this morning, got about three and a bit hours out in the hot sun. Usually do gym first of the day, but uh, going to do it afterwards, try and get some footage of it and uh, show you through a nice gym session. Yeah, Wednesday hump day they call it. And we just had a good session with uh, Delangers as well. And Sammy had a good session with Lulubar, what we do then about two yeah, and a half hours. hours. Three hours. three hours, three hours there on court. Just one session on court today, and now gonna get get in the gym. But yeah, let's go. Jets Fitness, 24 hours. If you uh, ever wanted a 1 a.m. session, this is your spot. Probably the last two or three years, I've been running the ship of my own kind of gym routines. Uh, I've learned so much from the National Academy guys. Invaluable stuff from them, and I've taken that on board along with some other stuff I've learned over the years. And I like to get quite creative. I don't like to wear shoes in the gym. Uh, I feel like that's really good for building the foot strength and overall kind of balance in the body. Um, I've switched from doing heavy weights a few years ago as I felt I just didn't feel the need to put my body under that much stress. Especially as tennis players, you know, it's a massive priority on speed and mobility and also longevity. I think some players can ne neglect the, the longevity aspect and we can kind of smash ourselves in the gym unnecessarily. 
and I have a massive, uh, I think balance is super important in tennis. So I really try and implement that in my gym as much as possible. Putting weight on one side of the barbell. Um, yeah, just getting really creative and I never, I never structure my programs before. I don't know if that's to my detriment or if that's holding me back, but I just love, yeah, the spontaneity of it and getting in the gym. I know what part I want to work on, legs or core or a combination of legs, arms and core. And I get in there, I know what exercises are available to me and I, and I, and I do it and I, I make sure I go hard. Um, I've been, been trying to be a little bit more diligent with my afternoon mobility. I'm very good every morning, but I can get a bit lazy after a big day and not do afternoon mobility. So I've been doing that this pre-season and I've actually I've, I've felt a difference. Felt, I feel less sore in the mornings um, and I just feel feel less niggly. I haven't had any niggles this pre-season, so it's, it's been great. The camaraderie to try and do some fitness together. I've actually not been one to do much in the past. Not through laziness, or maybe it is, but I don't think it's through laziness. Um, I've just never, never really felt like I've lost a match of fitness as of yet. I won't jinx myself. Might happen. <laughs> so I haven't felt the need to know, you know, put my body through that much stress. Um, and that's just more of a yeah a longevity perspective. And I want to be playing the sport till I'm 41. So uh, I think that's important. Not not pushing my body so far to the point where it'll break. Wow, the flying version of the beach. No fixating. This guy's fixating. So it's about mid training block already. Come out, come around pretty quick. Um, feeling grooved in. Feeling pretty, fair bit more conditioned than the start and just feeling the shots and for the motivation has just increased as I've gone on. I kind of wasn't that pumped to kick off right at the start because uh, I've just felt so quick after finishing the year in Japan. But now I'm um, yeah feeling super pumped in that groove and just the, the day to day for me of going uh, going to the beach and hanging out with the family and um, yeah just a few still moments end of the day I mean there's this one little lookout I go to and sit there and just observe the ocean and uh, of course surfing time as well it's been magical it just makes me um I've been uh, appreciating all those small moments in and around the training it makes the training uh, much much easier when you're not going back to a lonely hotel room I got my pants for my birthday when you bought me <laughs> The racket that Todd Woodbridge won Wimbledon doubles with. And <laughs> I used it when you were at Chinchilla. First day, play Skeggs, win like, win two qualies matches, all tight, and win my first round main. And then head to Chinchilla RSL that night for tea and go, I can hurt myself a beer. And so knocked it back a schooner. And then next thing, <laughs> hammered <laughs> at Chinchilla RSL and have a big night and get up the next day and playing, playing a French guy in the quarters. A guy or a guy? <laughs> <laughs> he was a guy for sure. <laughs> Definitely a guy. No, yeah. And sticking with him to a three all and then just start slipping away. And it's six three down, two love down. <laughs> I'm melted with Bridges racket. <laughs> <laughs> I love home primarily because I associate it with friends and family, I think. But no doubt, Sunshine Coast is one of the most beautiful places I have ever been. And I'm really thankful to actually leave this place a lot because it means I never take this place for granted. We've got some of the most beautiful beaches um, and just so many, so many things to do, so many places to explore, waterfalls, so many adventures to be had.
Yeah. And the weather, yeah, the weather's unbelievable. It's a great, great training environment. Hot weather, humid, getting ready for the Aussie summer. Uh, I just don't think there's many other better places to be. The top of your head? A bit left. <coughs> okay, good. As a small guy, I've got to be able to hit a lot of spots on second serves. Because our kicker's going to get too comfortable if I just go kick every time. So I have to be able to change up the pace, go wide, go body, slide, kick. Referring to a clock when he says eight to two. Eight to two. Eight o'clock. Come across to, to two o'clock. Six to twelve, we'll probably go into them quickly, more quickly. But it's more kind of top six. Eight to twelve is going to get the ball jumping that side a bit more. My forearm returns solid, but I feel like it's the side that I'm getting tight on. Definitely. Back then, I don't really think about forehand. I can get a bit guidey and a bit like back. I need to be more accurate. And up, I'm going to be getting more value. Focusing on starting further back so I can have more um, um, momentum onto it. Yeah. And I feel like back, it's more of a mentality thing. When I'm back, too much through the middle. And. Yeah, up, Why, cause sometimes I'm not getting enough coaches. Yeah, and because I'm fast, I'm like, oh, if I just get it in decent, you know, I can get the next shot. But I feel like I'm good enough, especially my forehand, good enough to do damage. Mm. And then when I'm up, I'm not getting enough on it, and then I'm my core position's so far forward that I'm stuffed. It might feel nice to try and shorten the follow through. It's a big focus on making sure the follow through is still nice and long, so it's like a, a normal shot. No jack socks. All right, now to really emphasise the looseness, I'm going to start with my racket down in the in the hitting position. So down in the position, just where I'm going to start the the hip hip thrust. So it's usually I get to about a, around about here. It's not the same every time. So I'm going to try and start my swing here. Keep the arm as dead as possible to try and exaggerate and really emphasize that feeling. So now I have a tendency to get pretty flat with my back end and I definitely don't want to turn it into a into a clay court raffer dog back end. But I do think I need to add a little bit more margin sometimes. It gets a bit close to the net, kisses it, kisses the net a lot of the time. So here and do the exact same thing, try and create as much spin as I can and try and get the ball up and down as quickly as possible. I actually usually feel if I do a good job of it and I hit the ball out in front. When I hit the ball out in front, it allows me to get more spin. If I'm hitting the ball out here, I can really brush up and extend my follow through. But if I get here, which is sometimes happens when I'm a bit nervous, or just sometimes in general, I have a tendency to hit it too late, too close to me, then because I'm here, I only have the option of kind of steering the follow through. I can't really fully release when it's here. So I have to kind of compensate, I can't fully let go. And that's when it becomes more of an arm and then I can't get the spin and it's more of it's more of just a contact point issue uh, so now I'll, I'll try and focus on that see more Now I'm going to do a few 
with your lefty forehands, this is going to really emphasize the looseness and getting me outside the ball because the left hand on a right handed backy most of the time works harder than the, than the right hand and it ensures that we get around the outside of the ball. If it's too right hand dominant, you're going to come inside the strings and you're not going to be able to get the outside of the ball. It's going to make your back end extremely flat and low margin, which can work if you've got the talent, but I haven't. So. <laughs> Same as the forehand, to create spin, we don't really want it to come too much for the arms. We want it more to be the arms more of passengers and the hip to do more of the work. I definitely notice when I'm, when I'm in a tight match or in an intense battle, my back end can go from feeling really nice and smooth, starts to get a bit arm dominant and my arms start bending and start to take all the load and that's when I can miss and also not get enough of my shot. So. I like to call this the Yannick Sinner. I did about five hours with him training in AO, spread over about a week, and we didn't hit one ball over 60% pace. Uh, and I thought, you know, he's, he's all right. He's an all right player. So I thought I'd take a little bit out of his book and do the same. Um, so we just got a 60% pace, focus on staying really, really loose with the arm, still trying to swing hard, but make the ball go slow. And that's gonna require a lot of top spin. Uh, so that's, you're going to need a loose arm for that, obviously. So it's really kind of working on what I've been working on at the start of this session. Really loose. And uh, another thing with the 60%, you're going to have a lot of time to get in position and make sure your body weight's going forward, which is another thing. I could probably do a little bit better on all my shots in general and, and in forehand. Uh, so making sure really loose and getting the left foot through the court and getting the body weight forward. Same thing on the back end now, about 60%. Exact same focus, body weight forward, arms loose, lots of spin to get the ball up and down. So there's a little switching mentality when I'm training, I'm kind of focusing on more, more technical, more feet, kind of more internal. And when I'm playing points, I want to switch to kind of the, ma the match mindset where I'm all my kind of, all my mind power is on problem solving and it's on what I'm doing with each shot. Not about what I'm, how I'm doing it, it's about what I'm doing more.
Eight seven. I know he's back in and gets a little bit tight. Kick wide, sir, volley. Oh, you're in trouble here, Sammy. It's fast, mate. Played singles points on the training block, like just proper okay. serving singles points. So, um, pleasure to be playing against the Langers. It's gonna be good. I'm feeling the ball nice though, and uh, yeah, I'm keen to lock in in case you know I do when I do get in singles in the tournaments as well. I want to be trying to win, I want to be trying to compete, I want to feel comfortable. So, for enjoyment and for the chance to win some matches, good to lock into a couple. Pop call last night. Yeah. 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 The Uronga Invitational is just such an amazing event. It is, it's come about from, from Oliver Anderson, whose, whose house hosts the event. Uh, him and I spoke about it a couple of years ago and we thought of the idea and we've got um, Dane and I are, and Sam, I guess, are the only three guys in it that still uh, are full-time tennis players. All the other boys have gone into other avenues, um, most of them still in, in tennis in some capacity. Go cars!
Yeah, bad. I love surfing. I love music. I love camaraderie and joking around and comedy. And uh, tennis is so often just um, played in such a serious notion, which is what is necessary at times to because there's so much money on the line and there's so much opportunity and so people are always trying to become the best possible player they can be and part of that pursuit is being selfish so it's so nice to combine tennis with a light-hearted celebra celebratory atmosphere and everybody on the sidelines cheering everybody else on drinks going down it's coming to the festive season we had all we're with this group of 16 friends that we've been We've met through tennis at different points in my life. Some of them I met at 10 years old, nine years old even. I'm 30 and still my, still my best friends. And it is the sport of tennis that brought us together. And that um, I, th I thank tennis. I'm grateful for tennis for creating the, the opportunity for those bonds to come about. So it's so beautiful to celebrate life together through, the, through playing tennis. Load up the back leg, get the left leg in you know, a deep lunge and just transfer the weight forwards. Good. Keep your foot on the gas. Yeah. Love it, love it. It would be a bit lopsided if we played with normal rackets for the guys that still play, apart from Ollie, obviously, because he's so gifted. So it's so epic to even things out, all play with wooden rackets and um, and just joke and laugh around dressed in vintage gear and um, yeah, we I love every part of that uh, day and I look forward to that continuing for the rest of my life. I'm sitting here, I just finished the last day of training with Dane this preseason. It went by super quickly, um, but I loved every day. Uh, Loved every day trying to put in the work together and I think both of us just loved being able to go to the beach every morning, have a swim, uh, go to the beach straight after trail, in between sessions, have a swim, get some food at Malula Bar together, um, enjoy the, the Sunshine Coast because we just feel that uh, this is the best place in the world and we're so lucky to be from here. So um, that was a massive part of... Uh, why we're so keen on this preseason is to all spend time at home and with our families, catching up with a lot of friends. Uh, went on a few dates, which is uh, a scarce commodity for me these days, being on the Challenger Tour where it's just men week in, week out. Um, yeah, just spending a lot of quality time with my family this, this uh, off-season or pre-season was, was amazing, both my brothers and my grandparents and... Uh, and a lot of my friends on the, in Noosa, um, surfing for me and kite surfing, surfing with some of my friends and kite surfing with my dad is, is uh, something that I just live for. It makes me, it fills my cup massively. So I was um, really enjoyed uh, being able to do that every day. And whenever I thought back to so many of the hotel rooms we sat in, 
dreaming, not wishing we weren't there, but dreaming of the time that we could enjoy the ocean and the, the things that the Sunshine Coast has to offer. I, I didn't take it for granted for one minute. Um, looking ahead to 2024, I'm so thrilled to be in the position that I have complete belief that I can um, make it to Grand Slam level playing doubles. Uh, I don't care what anyone thinks. I love doing it and I love the journey and um, I'm so excited to be able to be playing a lot of the similar tournaments today and, and um, that increases motivation a lot. Also, so there's so many other Aussie players, uh, Tristan Schoolkate and Adam Walton and Omar Jaseeker and Blake Ellis and a lot of other Aussies that we're really good friends with that um, make uh, those travels coming up uh, feel a lot more exciting. Um, I, I, a big goal of mine is to crack the top 100 in the world. Um, I, uh, I really think I can do it. I'm really excited to um, maintain complete commitment uh, to trying to be doing all the right things to better myself as a tennis player and simultaneously set those awesome day-to-day uh, -day routines for a, for a good life. So I, I'm so excited for 2024. Uh, I'm excited um, for it all to happen. I would, I definitely feel like I could do with another week or two, but um, I guess I have got one more week, and then I'm going to. Uh, even though I'm nostalgic, I'm not looking back. I'm just going to look forward and stay present and uh, and go for it. Big motivation this pre preseason was just the year ahead. Well, next year, 2024. Um, I've been really, really looking forward to it since I've been home. I feel like my tennis is starting to come along and I'm piecing the puzzles together. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to trying trying to put it all together and have a big year. Um, but yeah, that's, been, that's probably been my biggest motivation. And definitely the confidence that I have has, has been motivating me a lot as well. Having that belief that I actually can do it and can achieve what I want to achieve, that's been a massive motivator. Um, and I've yeah been working on again in me it's uh, a big focus has always been consistent mental application and I think I've done that really really well this preseason um, in terms of my tennis I made a bit bit of a change started to use natural gut um, but just working on a lot of things with my dad. Um, Getting a lot of variation on my serve, working on my forehand and my backhand, both trying to get weight into the court. And you're really, really finding out what type of game style I need to play and what I'm best at and drilling that in day in, day out. Probably felt the busiest I've ever felt in my life this preseason, which has been great. Balancing solo time, life admin, a hectic training schedule, family time, social outings trying to fit all the social outings I can in because I don't get to do it when I'm traveling. Um, but yeah, it's been, been a quite a hectic time, but uh, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say any major struggles. Uh, I've been quite motivated every single day and I've been, yeah, I've been loving every single moment. I'd say I was almost a little bit worried at the start. I, there was a few things, I, a few simple changes I wanted to make, a few small changes. And I didn't feel like they were clicking straight away. And I almost felt like time was slipping. I was putting pressure on, you know, I only have, you know, four weeks at home. I need to, not that I wanted to make big changes, but um, almost like worried that I wasn't going to make the improvements I wanted to make. But now looking back, I've, I'm feeling the doubts have kind of gone away. I'm feeling quite comfortable in my game. Um, I was almost yeah I was getting used to the natural gut as well so that took a little bit of time. But yeah, looking back on preseason, I I don't think I would have changed anything I I did. I I think I did a good job of trying to balance all the things and trying to fit everything I could while I was home. Um, did great work in the gym. I'm feeling super strong and and fast, which is great leading into the season. Feeling flexible, feeling injury free and feeling mentally fresh. Yeah, doing the pre-season with my, two of my best mates uh, just makes it so much fun. Uh, I, wish, I wish a lot more people could experience going to work every day 
with their two best mates because it makes it it makes it from work to play for sure. And I don't feel like I'm really ever working this preseason. Every single time I'm out on the court, some days I would um, more motivated than others, but every single day I get to see Callum and, and Sam and. You know, we have we have fun no matter what, no matter how we're hitting the ball, no matter what we're up to. If we're just hanging out, it's it's an amazing time. We have nothing to lose in doing this besides a bit of our time and enduring the sometimes uncomfortable task of talking to a camera and being that guy that vlogs. Two of my best mates, Callum by my side and Liam, his younger brother, being the editor, makes the process so much fun. I've always been inspired by people who share their unique journeys and lifestyles and love the inside perspective that isn't available to someone unless they live and breathe something. The worst thing that could come of this is a bunch of memorable videos to look back on and laugh, so why not?